Hey everyone, welcome back to Redonkulous Gaming. We're going to go ahead and today and go over a Junkyard for Dummies route. Uh, essentially, the goal of this video is to make it easier for you tanks out there to go ahead and pull this dungeon. This is the route that we're going to be using. Um, you can go ahead and feel free to screen capture that. Uh, the whole point here, though, is if you're someone who generally will plug a lot, this is a route that is essentially foolproof as long as you can get everyone onto the same page. Sometimes that's asking a lot. But all we did here is we went ahead and jumped off the platform at the front and then we immediately ran left and up the hill. I go ahead and I grab these two guys to allow for my DPS and the rest of the group to kind of go off on their own and grab the bots. There's two shock bots just on this hill and there's a num number of other bots in the area as well, especially if you have stealthies. So this is always a good first place to go. Just you mean, it doesn't matter where hard mode is flying, go ahead and run up this hill. And then go ahead and wait for one of those guys to completely explode before you pull this next pack right outside of Gunker's room. Um, you're going to do this so that you can get the bot that was just in the middle of this pack. And then you're going to wait for the patrol to pull away up here. And then bring them into this pack. This pack has a shock bot as well as another bot. And um, as you can see I've got a weak aura kind of tracking who has what bot or who's missing what bot in the top left there. So as the dungeon goes you can kind of see who's getting bots and when they're getting bots, but this route is going to guarantee that the whole team has all their bots before you pull the first boss. Now this week hard mode is flying over Gunker, so we're not going to go down into Gunker's room. Instead we're going to head, our, head on over to uh, the twins here. We just wait for that patrol to go by. Uh, this whole route is crawler free. These scrap bots as a tank, just a couple of things to be aware of, and I guess as melee as well. Uh, when they spin, there's no point in standing in it, get out. Uh, it will certainly tear up your melee. Uh, and as a tank, you can definitely take it, but if you're running with a pug healer, you want to make that a little bit easier for your pug healer. These clouds as well do cause line of sight, so you're going to want to make sure to move them out as soon as possible so that everyone can hit them. And then you're going to want to go ahead and interrupt their repair anytime that's up. This next pull is always going to be a double pull. Um, I, there's really not any affix that I don't double pull this on. Um, main reason for that, especially even on Necrotic Week, as you can see here, you only have three mobs on you at a time, so your Necrotic stacks don't even really get very high. The best thing you can do, because you've got three uh, mobs that are not targeting the tank uh, and targeting the rest of your party, is stun them. So, you know, use a Hodge like I just did there. Um, use any kind of totem, incap totem, uh, or AoE stun to kind of keep them clumped together when they are together, but that's really the best thing you can do on this pull. It's just a pain in the butt. You're going to want to go ahead and, and single target a lot of these down as they spread out, um, and once this pack is done, we're going to go ahead and uh, look to see where the Zolgamox pad is. All right, we've got a little bit of a wait here on the Zolgamox pat. Uh, we're not going to bother pulling these crawlers. As I mentioned, this is a crawler-free route. Uh, it actually makes this very, very easy. I've seen a lot of groups that I've been a part of when we pull the crawlers, um, and pugs kind of fail here, um, even if it's you know just the second or first boss that you're going to, uh, mainly because people are frustrated after wiping to a crawler, or they've done something goofy, or they're embarrassed, or whatever, so they just kind of leave group. So the best thing you can do is avoid these crawlers if you have the ability to kind of coordinate and chat with pugs and just let them know that the main focus here is Zolgamox. One thing you might have noticed is that we did lust the Zolgamox pull. Zolgamox scales with key level and uh, this being a 23, it's just a pain in the butt. We wanted to melt this pack so we go ahead and we, we lust on that. We really don't need it for the boss so it's completely your call whether or not you're going to save it for a boss. Uh, this is Tyrannical Week, and the fact that we don't need it in, in Tyrannical Week on a boss should tell you guys a lot. This next pull is, all, again, always a double pull for me. The only week in which it isn't um, is an Inspired Week, where I don't have the coordination in the group to do CC. Otherwise, we CC the Inspired Mob and we pull these two together. Um, again, even on Necrotic Week, it's really not all that taxing. My stacks don't even get really high here. Um, there is a shock bot here in the back. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick that up since it's just me and the mage at this point in time that don't have a shock bot. 
Um, and then the Shockbot actually missed a, or I'm sorry, the Mage actually missed a Shockbot that we just went by. So you're going to see him kind of double back here in a minute to go back and get it before we pull the boss. This is the last pull that we're going to do in here. Uh, same as before, these scrap bots again, pain in the butt when they spin, get out. Uh, when the clouds are up, move them out and uh, interrupt their heal. All right, we do have two pugs in this group, so this is at the point where we're kind of typing in chat and letting everyone know, hey, we're going to LOS this boss in the next poll. If you're not familiar with this strategy, uh, you're going to be able to see it here. And if you're curious, we are playing this back at 125% playback mode. We're not actually moving this, this quickly through the, through the uh, dungeon here. All right, so to LOS pull this boss, you need everyone to be on the same page. So everyone needs to kind of stack or follow the tank. That's why I marked with the square here. And um, the bosses are going to do some goofy stuff originally, but eventually they will come back and you will be able to stack them up. Now, each of them has an AOE or a mechanic that will one shot someone. Um, you, the Mega Crash and the Mega Taze, uh, those are the things in which can really kind of mess up your group. Both of those things can be 100% LOS. So if someone gets Mega Taze, all they have to do is kind of go line to sight um, so they don't get it, and it, it, it'll do nothing. Um, if there's a brown swirl on the ground, move out of it. That's what killed our warrior. And then we actually had our warlock go ahead and cheat back out into the main area, so the bosses <laughs> decided to run away. Um, they're on their way back now, and the warlock is coming back to kind of restack. But that's the risk. This is essentially the only risk of pulling the boss this way in a pug, is if, if people are not familiar with the strategy, they just might kind of cheat and try to run around or run out. But even without Lust, we, we make pretty quick work of, uh, of these two. Alright, so Gunker will be moving overhead to where we are now, so we're going to go ahead and get out of here. And then this next pull uh, is probably one of the harder ones for pugs to handle, but it's worth doing if you feel confident as a tank. Uh, so I go ahead and I pulled that first mob. You get the grunters really without trying, and then I want the dreadlord on the side. So I pull this for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first of which is I don't want to pull the crawlers at all on a pug. So this kind of makes up for it, and this essentially makes it so that there's a, really only one hard pull in here. Um, and so the value of going this way is that you get the Dreadlord buff uh, from the seasonal effects, um, and then you get quite a bit of percent as well from doing this. As a tank, you're going to want to be mindful of being rooted here on this pull. So if you're Paladin, Freedom, or if you've got a Paladin in your group, call for it. Um, otherwise, just be ready to hit your big DR, your, your big mitigation tools. So we actually had our mage die uh, in that last pull. So all I'm doing here is just a, a grunter pull to make it so that it's a little less chaotic for the next pull while we kind of get our mage uh, a second here to catch up to us. And he was close enough, so I went ahead and I moved into the next pull. Normally I would try to time this pull with the Dreadlord patrol that you guys will see here in a minute which is the Trog, he, he patrols from the cave that has a shock bot in it up into this hill right by us here. I actually noticed that there's a couple of people in the group that are having some trouble, so in a minute I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave that Dreadlord alone and I'm going to go and, and just kind of help these guys out and get some of these down. So you can tell with the the two pugs in the group that we have right now. Uh, the coordination is a little lacking, but this is still very doable. And as I said before, this is going to make it really, really nice from a percentage perspective. Uh, this route is going to award 100.9% completion, so it's right on the money for where you're going to need to be. So the team's kind of struggling a little bit with the spitefuls, kind of keeping them 
back a bit. Uh, that's going to force them to pull extra grunters and just kind of do some silly butt pull things that normally would not happen. Um, we get that cleaned up and then we go ahead and we make this next pull. The scrap bot, again, same mechanics as before. Watch out for the spinning, look out for the clouds, stay out of the explosions. Um, and then these bullies are going to enrage, so you're going to want to interrupt the enrage. If the enrage goes off, not the end of the world, try to purge it if you can. Um, and then they'll also do knockbacks on the tank, and then they have a big frontal. The big frontals, um, you just have to move. They target anyone in your party, so move out of the way, and you won't get, uh, you won't become dead, because they will one-shot you. All right, so we get on our boss pull. We pull the boss pretty much right on top of this Tesla here. Just follow boss mechanics, move out of the uh, brown swirls in the ground. You're gonna wa wanna pop some early mitigation um, just to kind of avoid being thumped on Tyrannical. And then the, the reason I kind of plant there as a tank is that nine times out of 10, your uh, debuff will go onto that Tesla, so you won't have to do a whole lot of movement. That time it didn't, so I had to make my way over to the only Tesla that didn't have a charge on it, drop my debuff on it, so that these little grunters get uh, beaten up without us putting much effort into to killing them. And then this is all rinse and repeat. One of the easiest boss fights in here. As you can see, I have the uh, the debuff again. It didn't end up going on the nearest Tesla. Um, I really needed to, to react to that a lot faster there, and I just didn't, so it's about to fall off now. Someone had already gotten the robot, so I felt pretty good about it, and we had three out of the four Teslas up. I didn't feel like moving the boss again when he was that low, especially for our melee, being in execute range. We actually had our Warlock go down there at the last second, so he's going to be in need of a Shockbot. We'll just go ahead and go back the way we came. Hard Mode is going to go ahead and move over um, the Trog Boss now. So we are essentially going to be free to kind of run right through. And head on over to Gunker. Now on, on weeks where hard mode is not on Gunker, because of our pathing, we would go Gunker first. And then, regardless of um, where hard mode started, uh, we would kill Gunker. And then hard mode would move over Gunker, and then we could go ahead and, and go to the Twins. So this route pretty much works the same way every time you run it. This Gunker Trash is probably the most dangerous area of the dungeon, mainly because of all the different things that are coming out at any given time, depending on your pull size. So you've got this big swirl, as well as a cleanse that's needed. Um, I'm going to be helping out the healer here in cleansing our Warlock. And then these little slimes don't initially um, spawn and uh, target you. They do have an aggro table that can be somewhat of a pain to hit, especially in this target capped world. But I generally try to stick with uh, three mobs, especially on Fortified Week. This week I probably could have gone a little bit more, but everything's so spread out that these pulls kind of make themselves. So the biggest thing here is that with these toxic lurkers, you don't want them channeling on any of your party members. It stuns them. The uh, elementals do a charge. Uh, which is just a frontal mechanic that you can avoid. And then you're going to want to interrupt just pretty much anything else that's interruptible to kind of help with the overall damage that's going out. Now I'm kind of going to I'm going to go off path here a little bit. You can see I grabbed that toxic lurker. I'm going to go ahead and grab um, the monstrosity along with another slime. I don't 
I'd like to over pull this area a little bit again to kind of make up for the crawlers not being pulled because they are a decent percentage but then from here it's going to be fairly linear after we beat Gunker heading on up to the last boss all right so we go for the last monstrosity you see I grab um, the lurker off to the side here to kind of finish this pull off and then I interrupt that right away try to interrupt it with Avenger shield I was on the wrong target had to heal actually but yeah that's what you don't want to have channel because it will stun a party member As you can see, we're getting everything leading up to this last monstrosity. And we're going to solo pull that last monstrosity just to make it easier. We've got two frontals in this group. We've got a, a channel stun that we need to interrupt. So this is one that um, can be somewhat challenging on fortified weeks, especially if you have members of your party who are just not paying attention to where the frontals are going um, or are either unable to keep up with cleanses or, or whatever it might be. So this will be the last pull before the boss. And it's nice and easy. Everyone's um, getting their cooldowns back up, uh, building imps, doing what they need to do. So in the Gunker area, there's quite a few uh, bots, welding bots, um, shock bots. So if anyone doesn't have a shock bot at this point in time, there's an opportunity to get three of them. But our party was good to go. Now for Gunker, I see a lot of people that just kind of stand in the uh, cleansing circle 100% of the time. The actual trick to Gunker is to bait the green circles, the green slimes that come and goop both the bots and the players. So as a tank, I rarely try to stand in there unless he's either pulling in or pushing out or a green uh, slime drops on me because I don't want to get gooped. So I, I immediately run back in as you can see right there. But I am always kind of ahead of the circle to avoid any kind of chance that uh, my bot is going to become gooped. So I'm going to get out ahead here and I'm just going to follow my normal rotation. And then when he does his vortex, um, I'll get in. Or if I'm about to go onto uh, the green slime area myself. But definitely worth noting that you should not be in the circle the entire time because you can bait those, uh, those goops out so that they don't hit a party member or your bot. So nice and clean, we're heading up to the last boss. Uh, we have roughly 87% of the dungeon pulled. Uh, being anywhere between 86% and 88% right now is completely fine. That's where you want to be. The variable in there is going to be just how many uh, gunker, or not how many gunkers, how many uh, grunters your group pulls. This is always a safe double pull, so I like to do it here, especially once the uh, frontal goes out on the mob that kind of machine guns around here. Uh, nice and easy to do. If you can get it without the patrol, even better. And you can see the patrols kind of coming back where I pulled that second pack now. So given our completion percentage, it would have been ideal to not pull that. Um, but you'll see here in a second, it gets butt pulled. So we're going to go ahead and grab it. And then we're going to just bring that on up to the next pack, which will be our last pack. So we are more than good on percent in this route, especially because we got a couple extra grunters. Then we got that extra patrol there. Um, but this makes it so that it's a fairly linear dungeon, despite it being obviously very non-linear. Uh, but it allows everyone to get all of their, their shock bots at least before the first boss, regardless of which path you take. Now for this guy, I see a lot of tanks just kind of keep him in the middle. 
it's obviously 100% up to you how you want to handle it. I always like to pull it to an edge because you've got, you know, the, the blasts that are hitting the middle and you don't know which direction they're going to come from. And you could say, hey, you know, those blasts could come right on top of you and go right down the middle too. That's very true. But I just feel like being on the edge just gives me a little bit of time uh, for movement here. I can just kind of follow the outside of the circle uh, and make it so that these extra mobs here don't come in and just kind of blow up on my group. So I always go to, to an outside, and then I like to position myself to be able to see which side is going to get the um, electricity. Tons of classes that can immune this. Uh, as a paladin, I just divine shield myself and horse my way on up here. Our warlock went ahead and put a gate down uh, for us to easily transition back down to the boss. Now there is damage that goes out while you're channeling on that, so your healer needs to be mindful of that, especially on Grievous Week. But from here, it's, of course, very straightforward. This is where you're going to want to Lust on a high key and uh, try to one-phase this where possible. You can see everyone in the group is well over 20k on the boss. Unfortunately, we were not able to one-phase this again. So, I'm just rinse and repeat. I pull this guy to, the, to an outside. We actually run into a little bit of trouble here based on where the additional ads spawn. Uh, so where I wanted to pull him originally was taken from me right away. And then I'm also thinking of the warrior here uh, as far as his positioning. So I just try to get away uh, from the explosions so that he doesn't get backed up into a corner. We're going to get this guy down, and then the primary boss only had 1.89%, I believe, uh, health left. So this is just a matter of getting up here, getting through the uh, Tesla phase, and then looting our chest. Our warlock actually decided to, uh, to stop on the electricity grate there and get seated. I don't have my immunity, so I'm just kind of taking this slow all the way through. And it actually takes us a lot longer this time around to phase this. And that's going to wrap it up. Hopefully this was a helpful video for you tanks out there that are looking to figure out a relatively straightforward way to tank Junkyard. Let me know your feedback in the comments below.